Hey guys, welcome to the NC Barndo Build channel. This is Electrical Rough In Part 1. And what I want to focus today's video on is this sub panel. If you're new here, our build is a little bit unconventional in that our main panel is over into the garage. That is a 200 amp main breaker panel. That panel is feeding this 100 amp sub panel. We did that because the garage was a separate build. We have the occupancy permit for that building and I wanted to utilize the power in that building. So we turned the power on in the garage and now that panel is going to feed this panel. So this is just part one focusing on this panel, which basically is going to house the receptacles and lights for the house, all the other major appliance circuits like your refrigerator, your range, your hot water heaters, washer dryer, all that stuff is going to bypass this panel, actually come up through this cavity, through the breezeway ceiling, and into the main panel. So that's the general layout. Now, let's get into the five things that I think are critical for the DIYer to think about and to utilize when you're attempting your own electrical DIY install. Now, this build we've been working on for quite some time, so I am governed under the 2017 NEC and the North Carolina Residential Building Code. Hey, I forgot one other note. I'm not a licensed electrician, so take everything in this video as informational. It's what's helped me. If you're not comfortable working with electrical because this can be a little bit of an intimidating project, get a licensed individual to help you out or do the project in its entirety. With that being said, let's get right in to number one of the five things that I think are critical for the DIYer to install your own electrical system. When working with electrical, let's talk about the obvious safety concern. Make sure the power is off to any circuit that you're working on. For me, with the rough-in inspection, they don't want anything hooked up in the main panel. No breakers, no conductors hooked up, nothing. All they want is the wires ran to the panel, they want the wires ran to the box or the conductors ran to the box and that's it. A not so obvious danger when doing your electrical rough in can be found right here in this electrical box. Now I don't have any power on in the building so there's no risk of me getting zapped by any power in any of these conductors. When you do your rough in, you're gonna have to take that outer sheathing of your Romex off. You're gonna have to get your wires or your conductors exposed and this box is a little messy. I got to tidy things up in this box, but coil your conductors back up so the ends aren't sticking out of the box. This conductor right here, I don't even know if you can see it on camera, is sticking out and it's at a good height where let's say I want to go down and put a staple or I want to need to drill a hole in the bottom plate and I'm not paying attention to what's sticking out of this box and I come down, that is a great eye poker and heaven forbid you miss that and it gets jammed in your eye, it can cause a serious injury. Wear safety glasses when you're doing your rough in, take your wires, coil the ends, coil them up into the box. It also prevents when you're walking by your boxes from scraping your arms on them or catching clothing because the ends of those when you cut them can be a little bit rough. So coil your wires into your box, wear your safety glasses and be careful on the job site. Okay, number two. Room layout. Think about how you want your outlets placed or your receptacles placed, how you want your lights, where you want your switches. This is the time after the framing is done and you're doing your rough in to get everything placed. So before we ran a single conductor, a single wire, I had labeled where I wanted all my boxes. All the outlet boxes were placed, the switch boxes were placed, and once all of that was done, I knew where the circuit was going to start in the sub panel, and I knew where the circuit was going to end, either the outlet or the switch. So think about room placement. I'm in the kitchen area, or what will be the kitchen area. In front of me is the island. Behind me is the range. For me, it was important to have everything in alignment. I wanted this island and the sink centered on the range and hopefully the faucet on the sink will split the range down the middle. Right behind that will be the pot filler on the wall. And that makes me and my OCD very happy. For my wife, it wasn't a big deal. She was okay with having the sink offset a little bit. 
But what really bothered me was where are we going to hang the pennant lights over the island? We're going to have two pennant lights. I have the boxes wired up. We'll talk about why my wiring is underneath the ceiling plane <laughs> in another video. If you're interested in that, you'll end up seeing in a later video the finished product and it'll hopefully make sense. But if the pennants were centered on the island but the sink wasn't centered then that means one pennant was going to be hanging closer to the sink than the other one and I think that was going to bother me so we elected to instead of having a four by eight island we cut a foot off for made it four by seven we can center the island now in front of the range and not crunch the refrigerator area too much and still have a nice big walkway there and a walkway in between the island and the range so we can get around but those are the things you're going to have to think about when doing your electrical rough-in. Where are you placing all these boxes and switches? Also, you don't want to walk into a dark room or have to walk across a dark room to turn on a light. So inevitably, you're going to have probably some three-way and maybe even a four-way switch. We have one four-way switch in our build, a couple of three-way switches, and we'll get into how to wire those up in a later video. But... Uh, yeah, think about that. Think about where you want your outlets. Are you going to have a desk up against a wall? Do you need a plug there for your computer, what have you? So those are all important. That's number two. Number three in our list of five is planning out your electrical system. And I think the aviator in me may be showing here. When, when you talk about aviation and specific aircraft, we talk about electrical systems, hydraulic system, pneumatic systems that kind of thing. And I, I carry that over into the build a little bit. So when I'm thinking about my electrical system, I want to keep the theme the same through the entire build. And what I mean by that is I'm running 12-2 for all of my outlets. So all my circuits will be 20 amp circuits. All my lighting circuits are going to be 15 amp circuits. I'm running 14-2 for those. And I think what you'll find is with, especially with the lighting circuits, you don't have to worry about amperage per se, but you're going to have to think about how do you want to break things up. Do you want a bedroom tied in with another bedroom or do you want them separated? Do you want a bedroom tied in with the living room? Think about that. When you look at your floor plan overall, you can think about how you tie things together. For me, it worked really well sitting down, looking at a hand sketched blueprint and then kind of deciding how I wanted to divvy things up putting things on different circuits. So if I lose power to a circuit, I'm not losing power to the entire house. In theory, I could probably run all the lights in this house because everything is LED on one circuit because they pull such little power. But I didn't want that because I want things, if someone blows a circuit in a bedroom, I don't want it to take the kitchen out or the master bath out. So I separated things and the way I did it, there's no right or wrong here, but I run outlets separate from the lights. Now you can run them together. In other words, I could say, hey, master bedroom, outlets and the lights on one circuit, boom. So if I cut power to that room, I lose both lights and outlets. For me, I wanted the outlet separate. If I blow a circuit on the outlet, I still have lights that I have in that room that I can use to work with. So think about that. Another thing that I think is very important is wire everything the same. For our build, the power always comes with the exception of a couple of spots because I couldn't come up through the crawl space, but the power is coming from the crawl space. So all the power is run down through the floor into the crawl space and I go to the switch first. You can wire it, you can run power to the fixture and then run it to the switch and back, or you can run it to the switch and then up to the fixture. For me, I know every room in this house, power runs to the switch first and then runs to the fixture. Same with a three-way. I'm running power to one of the switches, then I'm using that 14.3 to jump over the travelers over into the second switch and then up to the fixture. The four-way is no different. I'm running power to the first switch, running to the second, running to the third, up to the fixture. There's different ways of doing it. I'm not saying that's right or that's wrong. Do what makes sense in your head. So I know when I come back in, if I ever have to do work in this house, I know exactly where the power is coming from and I know exactly how things are ran. 
Number four in our list of five tips I can give for the DIYers kind of goes along with number three, and that's staying organized. I'm below the sub panel, and you can see above me here, I'm trying to stay as organized as possible as I come down through the floor, and I'm running everything together as I go, doubling up where I can. And as I need the circuits, they branch off both the left and right hand side. So this helps when you have to run wires down because you forget to label something, which did happen to us for one of the circuits. Staying organized underneath helps. And let's go up top. All my circuits coming up are labeled. So I know exactly what's on what circuit and I'm keeping them nice and tidy as I come up through the floor into my sub panel. Lastly, your switch boxes. Keep them organized, keep things labeled. This is a four gang box and I have a four way circuit into this box. And you can see if I run all this and then try to go back later and figure out what's what, I'm gonna have a heck of a time. This one's a little bit messy, gotta tidy it up yet before inspection. Let me show you one that's completely done. Here's a look at a simple two gang box with some two way switches. I have power coming in and going out of the box. So I have my powers tied together. I have a fan tied into this box with a switch and a closet light tied in. And you can kind of see in the back, I have my neutrals all tied together, capped off and the grounds behind that all tied together. And then I have two pigtails off my grounds for both my switches. <clears throat> But again, just keeping it nice and tidy and safe, keeping those wires tucked back in there, labeling things. So when I go to put these switches in, I know exactly, hey, do I want the fan on this side? Do I want the fan on this side? Closet here, closet here, where do I want it? I have it labeled. Power coming in, going out, and again, pigtails off of that. You can kind of see how I'm doing it. There's different ways of doing it. You can power it through the switch as well. I'm pigtailing things, but that's a nice, organized mess, shall we say. Tip number five, once you decide where you want your lights, it's time to actually take the measurements and get the placements in your room. I do it on the floor as opposed to trying to take measurements on the ceiling, it's a lot easier. I get my mark on the floor where I want my light in the room and then I set my laser up, put the X right on my pencil mark and transpose that mark to the ceiling. For those that have made it this far in the video, I'm gonna give you a sixth recommendation that I have for an electrical rough in, and that is simply enjoy the process. At this point, things are settling down in that it's not really strenuous, but you have to think about what you're doing, and I really enjoy that type of work, thinking about wiring these switches up, where I want power to go, how things are gonna work. And in the end, when I flip a switch and the light comes on, or I plug something into a receptacle and it turns on or works, it's very rewarding. If you're going to lay awake at night wondering if you did things right and worrying about things catching on fire, hire an electrician to do your project for you or at least help you with the project. I think you'll find it worthwhile and I think you'll learn some things as you do it. I know I have during this whole process. And uh, yeah, in the end, this is going to be something that I'll always remember and something that if you decide to tackle on your build, you'll remember too. That's all I have for you guys today. We'll see you on the next video.